counseling micro skills, questioning, probing, and clarifying. In this mock counseling interview, these are the only micro skills the therapist uses. Sandra, welcome. We had started to talk last week about your sense of underlying anxiety around the pandemic. Where would you like to go with the conversation today? Questioning. Well, I feel like I have this weight on me all of the time and I don't really know what to do about it. It's like there's this something hanging around there in the background all the time and it never goes away. It's just this sort of constant presence. How does this weight that you're feeling all of the time impact you as you go about your day-to-day -day life? Questioning. Well, I'm a really busy person. I have lots of things going on and um, I can forget about it for long periods of time, especially when I'm working on a project or something. I just, you know, I get in my head and I'm busy and I work away at it, but it just kind of keeps coming back. It circles back. It circles back. Um, yeah. I find myself distracted, um, restless, um, tired. How many times a day would you say you're conscious of thinking about the pandemic? Clarifying. I wake up in the morning and it's there maybe because I tend to take a quick glance at the news on my phone and there's always something about the pandemic and then it probably filters through my mind a few times a day depending on what comes across my email or um, other kinds of connections. Uh, if I go for a walk and people have their masks on then I'm thinking about that I'm thinking about staying away from people. Um, and then typically I watch the six o'clock news. So um, uh, that's mostly pandemic, at least now that we're not talking about Trump all the time. So um, yeah, it's there. What are the other kinds of things that play into your experience of this pandemic that might be different from other people's experience? Questioning. Well, maybe in lots of ways I'm affected by it on a day-to-day -day basis less than other people. I mean, I worked from home for 20 years. Um, my partner's retired, so we're not in a position where we have to be out in the world. Um, and I guess, though, I'm my life is kind of surrounded by seniors, so I'm conscious of the risk for them, including my spouse, who's older than me. And um, my parents who live a long ways away and my spouse's mother uh, got COVID this summer and that was a really stressful time. She's 98 years old and she survived, uh, which is amazing. But um, that experience was rattling for us on many levels. And this week I heard from a colleague who has COVID and I think it's never that far away from any of us. And maybe that's the um, anxiety piece, the unpredictability of it. So how much of your sense of anxiety is about yourself versus other people? Questioning. I think generally I'm probably more concerned about other people than about myself. Um, but I am conscious of the fact that I have a compromised immune system. And so I think that makes things less predictable. Um, so it's not that I'm not thinking about that or aware of that and conscious of that as I move around in the world. Um, but I think generally my anxiety is for um, not just the people I know, but like the world, what's going on in the world and um, all of those people who are in way less privileged positions than those of us in Canada um, or those within Canada that are, in, that are in way less privileged positions. I also find that some of the time I'm um, not just anxious, but I, I start to get frustrated and irritated with other people who um, just don't seem to be taking it seriously. 
what are the kinds of things that prompt that shift from feeling anxious to feeling irritated or frustrated? Questioning. Mostly it's behavior. You know, when I see people who um, just refuse, you know, we have people in our extended family who refuse to wear masks, even if it's mandated in the region that they're in. Um, and I think that there's a sense living on Vancouver Island that we are in this a sort of safer zone. Um, and I think that is true to a large degree, but I think with that sense of privilege comes um, behaviors, island privilege. Tell me a little bit more about island privilege. Probing. Well, I think we just have um, less people, more space, less COVID cases. Um, How do you think your experience would be different if you lived somewhere other than on Vancouver Island? Questioning. Yeah, so it's this, this position of privilege where um, this isn't right on our front doorstep in the same way that it is in other places. So um, it's easy to uh, not attend as fully as maybe we should be. My family isn't here, so in some ways I'm not just island privileged, I'm connected, you know, to colleagues and to family and to other people all over the place, so um, I don't escape from that reality for very long. Where does your family live? Clarifying. My partner Glow has family in Calgary. Um, and my family is in Ontario, Ottawa. My parents are in Ottawa and a sister outside of Ottawa and a sister north of Toronto. Give me an example of the kinds of things you do to reduce this sense of being covered by this cloud all of the time. Probing. Probing. 